If you're wondering how to set up your home in the Montessori way to foster independence and cultivate confidence in your kids, you're in the right place. Welcome to part one of this mini series where we're gonna tackle setting up your child's bedroom as well as the entryway. In part two and three of this series, we'll talk about the playroom and toys as well as the kitchen since those are kind of like the biggest hot spots. And if you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. And just kind of a quick backstory on where we're at in our lives as well as for like long time followers what's going on because I just took a month off and if you hate wordy introductions there's chapters in the description box below so you can skip this one minute rant I'm about to go on but basically about a year ago we moved out and sold our house and in the span of that year we moved eight times. Pretty much every move though was into a fully furnished house, but it gave us the opportunity to really see what worked for our family and our kids from an efficiency perspective and what didn't work. And when we moved into this new house here, which is why I took the last month off because we moved on June 1st and then three weeks later headed back to South Florida where we originally are from and spent a couple weeks down there with family and everything since we hadn't been there since we left and picked up some more furniture because where we live now is very rural and we don't have an Ikea as you will see in this, most of our furniture is from Ikea. So I will also leave links to anything I show you guys in the description box below. But that's kind of where I've been the last month. That is what has inspired a lot of our decision process stuff is that we really <laughs> had gotten a crash course in what did and didn't work for us. But everything you kind of see here is also renter friendly because we are renting this house until we figure out what we're gonna do. But we will be here for a full year. So I really took the time to set things up right for us. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys seven solutions for the bedroom and clothing. Let's jump into those now. So the first thing I want to talk about is this little closet hack. I got this little closet system for $150 and I initially planned on putting this entire system right into my daughter's closet and using it as is. However, whoever installed these wire shelves in the closets of our house did them lower than they should have been and they anchored it in with a flat head nail, which is shockingly hard to get out. I was looking at the instructions for this closet system and what I realized was it was actually just two identical halves that you just put on top of each other. Technically, you could use them separately. And that is what I ultimately did. So for the price of one closet system, I was able to create two different closet systems, one upstairs and one downstairs, which I'll show you later in this video. The big thing with a closet system like this is you wanna make sure that you are measuring out from the wall to where you plan to place the system so that there's enough length to reach both sides. What we basically did was we just created two sides of hanging clothes for my daughter, my son's too. He doesn't really get hangers yet. Doesn't really need them. Up top, we are going to be putting, I'm still like unpacking some of their other clothes, but up top is going to be more out of season clothing as well as clothes that they're growing into. And then down here is clothing that my daughter loves to wear every day. And in the actual shelving system, I realized very quickly, my daughter was not going to be able to keep her clothes perfectly stacked. So I separated them out so they were tall enough to fit these storage bins. And what I did was I just themed them. So at the bottom, we have outer sun shirts. Next to that, we have my son's bathing suits. Above that, we have pajamas. Next to that, we have underwear and socks. Above that, we have some out of season long sleeve shirts. And next to that, we have my daughter's bathing suits. And then this top little shelf here is sweatshirts, which she's not messing up with right now anyway. For reference, my daughter's four and a half years old. Having access to this many clothes is not overwhelming for her. If she was two and a half, I probably would not do this for her. In fact, in previous videos, I will link in the description box below, I talked about what we we did for her getting dressed every day when she was younger. Obviously this is not going to be enough of all of her clothes. So what I want to show you guys is over in this part of her room, we have just a basic Ikea Tropash shelving system. I used this little label maker to create labels that have both the words, but because she can't read yet, I also added pictures to the labels. This way if my husband's putting away clothes, he knows exactly where things go. Daughter also can look at the pictures and tell what she's pulling out. What I did was each row is kind of so we have tops for my daughter, middle rows, bottoms for my daughter, and then the last row is some shared clothing and then some of my son's things. I am going to be moving my son's stuff out of here. In the past, through all of these moves, my kids have always just had all of their clothes in the same spot. But now that we're a little bit more settled, my son just turned two, we're going to start separating out his stuff a little bit more. So what I'm going to do with his clothes instead is I have these little drawer organizers. Typically adults use them for like undergarments and I have used them in the past 
I don't know if I ever showed this in a video, to just separate my out my daughter's shirt. And that's exactly what I'm planning on doing with my son's stuff in his bedroom across the hall. And then before we leave my daughter's room and we go downstairs to show you our entryway solutions, as well as a couple other little closet-y things that I do, I wanna show you guys a few other things that I've done in her room to make it a little bit more Montessori friendly. Number one is gonna be these bookshelves. These are shared for both my kids. They both spend a ton of time in here. Eventually my son's gonna be sleeping in the bottom bunk and she'll have the top one. But basically forward facing Montessori style bookshelf so kids can see what books they're grabbing. The lower shelves are not as tall, which works really well. I put more of the board books down there. And then these higher shelves here are obviously the tallest because there's some top. And those are gonna be your longer storybooks, books that have pages that could tear more easily, books just better suited developmentally for my older child. Really simple situation. In the playroom video, I will show you guys how we handle books in that space, but the bulk of our book collection is here. The other thing that we have happening here are child-sized stools for them to sit on, but these ones are actually have a rubber grip on the feet, and they are also really well balanced, so they double as step stools. I'm a huge fan of those. It's kind of like a secret little hack. Also in here, I want to show you guys that we have another Trofast system. This one's more so for toys or overflow books or makeup and accessories. Kind of set up her own little makeup station. She's really into jewelry. The other kind of thing I want to talk about is art on the wall. Montessori typically likes to place art where the child's line of sight is. What we do is obviously I put up all these little stickers behind me on the wall, but on this side of the wall, my daughter's art wall. So pretty much every home we've lived in, one of the first things my daughter does is make pictures or have me make pictures with her. And we go ahead and tape those up to the wall. It's a tradition we started that she loves and makes each room feel extremely personal to her. So we have her little art collection that she adds on to, swaps things out. My daughter hates white bedrooms. If you saw her bedroom in our old house, we let her paint the walls like crazy. We did it with her and we loved that. So this is our way of creating colorful space that feels very much like her that she had a say in. And then the last little thing in her bedroom here is we just have a little hamper. She's responsible for filling it up with her dirty clothes and bringing it down on laundry day. Now let's move downstairs because we have a lot going on for clothing down there as well. So when you walk into this room, it's our laundry room, but then we have what I call the Hobbit closet right through here, which is basically the under stair storage. Here is where I put the second half of that closet system I mentioned at the start. And I did have to get two more shelves to fill it in and buy some little hooks. So the curtain rod is going to act for seasonal outerwear, jackets and things that we don't want to keep upstairs or have to run upstairs for. Right now it's summer, so we just have our raincoat in here. But I also use this curtain rod for anything that doesn't fit into the little tension rod in here because it's not a big space between our washer and it. Anything that doesn't fit there for drying, I use over here for hang drying. And then again, I just use some plastic bands you can get at like the dollar store or Ikea or whatever. And I try to make it like, what are the things that as we're going out to the car, we forget about. So in here we have more bathing suits because at the last second we'll decide to go to the beach or to the pool or to run through some sprinklers in the backyard, whatever. So we keep some bathing suits here. We keep spare towels here, spare socks. And then the rest of it's just kind of like adult stuff that I'm still unpacking and figuring out. It's like hurricane prep kit, spare diapers all that fun stuff. And then out this way, we wanted, because our entryway is clearly not very big, we go in and out of our garage primarily. We wanted to make a rule where there was no shoes in this house. The garage is gonna go up. It's gonna be loud. With that in mind, we have a shoe bench here. And just as the name would suggest, it's where we keep our shoes. So kids have little cubbies. They are able to come out here, grab their shoes, and then head on out. When we're coming in, take your shoes off drop them off here. The nice thing about this particular shoe bench is that it came with two hanging coat racks. Follow me. We hung one really low here so that the kids could hang up and get access to their helmets as well as like their water gun hanging toy because that needs to be upside down so it dries out. And that's kind of like the kid's corner. And then, I mean, technically this part should go in the playroom video, but alas, here we are. We keep all their scooters and bikes. Clearly I'm gonna be working on a balanced bike review post over there. Plus we'll be reviewing this bad boy soon, which is our little 
Madsen e-bike, which has some seats and seat belts for the kids to ride in. It's a really fun time. Uh, and our blow up paddle work. Let me know if you guys want me to do a, a post on all of our weird outdoor toys. But yeah, so that's kind of what we have going on here. It's a million degrees outside. And then the last little thing that we try to do, because we do live in a beach town, I don't want everyone running upstairs with Sandy stuff. And what we did in our downstairs, we technically have a downstairs master, which we just turned into my office, as well as like the TV room, but there's a bathroom in there. And so what I did in this bathroom closet, the linen closet here, is I added just a couple more bins and we keep some spare underwear, bathing suits, and pajamas down here for the kids so if we come in from the beach take a shower they have that immediate let's change into some comfy clothes right there situation the last thing i want to show you in our bathroom area are these little suctiony hooks i have them throughout our shower just stick it on the wall and then push it down and it suctions directly to the wall you do this on a dry surface and then they have hooks low enough to hang their wet bathing suits if you guys don't do the beach like we do you could use this for their toy baskets you could use this for their hair stuff whatever it is you want you could do like a little caddy on here but that's how we use it post beach straight into this downstairs shower hang up your bathing suit after you rinse it off and really the biggest tip i have which i hope you guys saw in this video is just creating a lot of efficient stations and setting up your home to optimize it for full use in a way that really flows with your family so we didn't want sand upstairs so we created a little station in the downstairs walk-in shower area we didn't want to have to run upstairs if we forgot their coat and jacket so we wanted to have a little space right off the entryway that that worked for us i'm a big proponent of maximizing your house for efficiency of actually using the space we look to see like where do we always stand when we say oh i gotta go back upstairs for that and then we try to create a station there so that we can save ourselves some time and the flow is just a lot smarter all of this together the two bookshelves the two trophies the two closet system areas the shoe bench and all the bins and stuff cost around six hundred dollars not bad considering how much space we got and how much storage we got in that. Big fan. Kids love it. I'll link everything below. Be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss the next videos in this series. All about our playroom as well as the kitchen. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with a friend. Drop me a comment below with what your family's organizational hacks are for the clothing in their bedroom. As always, my name is Rachel. Have a good one.